This Week with Bob Mueller on News 2. This Week. Wow, thank you very much. The former president stumps for votes and cash in Nashville before religious broadcasters. More in our This Week cover story. We are being invaded the border. Think about the numbers. Senator Bill Haggerty back from the southern border and criticizing President Biden for inaction while saying no to a bipartisan border security bill. We want to make sure that this plan um, serves the city, serves Nashvilleians effectively. Five months into his first term, Nashville Mayor Freddie O'Connell discusses his goals to improve how Nashville grows, moves, and works. What I encourage all of our committees to do is look at every single university. And a possible compromise that could save some TSU board members from being ousted by GOP lawmakers. Hello again and welcome to another edition of This Week. Former President Trump stumps in Nashville before religious broadcasters. Also, a possible compromise could save some TSU board members from being ousted. A conversation with Nashville Mayor Freddie O'Connell five months into his first term. But we begin with Tennessee U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty back from the southern border and what he calls an invasion of migrants while justifying his vote against a possible solution, a bipartisan Senate border security bill. A dire warning from Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty. We are being invaded at the border. Think about the numbers. 10 million people have come into this country. That's an estimate because we're not sure how many people have gotten away. According to U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, there have been about 9 million migrant encounters nationwide since Biden took office, not just at the southern border, and some of the migrants were turned away. When asked why he opposed a bill some of his Republican Senate colleagues say will make the border more secure, Haggerty said, We didn't have the opportunity to amend it. I would have loved to have put in place my legislation that would require only citizens be counted for the purpose of allocating congressional districts and electoral votes. The Democrats would not allow that vote to happen. They want this to continue. President Biden supported the bipartisan border deal, along with the Border Patrol Union. Bill negotiator Senator Kristen Sinema of Arizona responded to that criticism on the Senate floor. The Senate chose to vote no on the motion to invoke cloture to move forward on this legislation. Therefore, we are not able to amend or debate Blocks from where Haggerty spoke, massed neo-Nazi demonstrators chanted anti-immigrant rhetoric over the weekend. Reporters asked Haggerty if his language encourages these types of groups. Do you believe that your rhetoric could be encouraging extremist groups here in Tennessee? Whether Let me be clear. I'm not using rhetoric. I'm citing a fact. You tell me 10 million people isn't an invasion. You need to check your facts. But that is the same things we were hearing over the weekend from groups holding swastikas. So I'm trying and to I'm telling you, you your, your, your false attempt to correlate what I'm saying with some extremist group is wrong. I don't buy it. And when asked repeatedly if he denounces the group of neo-Nazis, Haggerty said, I denounce any group that wants to promote violence in the United States. I denounce the terrorists that are coming across our border right now. A possible compromise could keep some members of the Tennessee State University Board of Trust in their seats. Initially, Republican lawmakers moved to oust the entire board at Tennessee's only public, historically black university. News 2's Chris O'Brien explains why. Senate Republicans introduced and pushed a bill earlier this month to vacate the majority of Tennessee's board of trustees and replace them with governor appointees. They argue the board has faced a slew of financial problems and made little or no attempt to fix them. The old members seem to relinquish their authority to the president, which is something the board should never do. But House Republicans seem a little more flexible, signaling wiggle room in what was thought to be an open and shut case. Yes, obviously there are discussions going on uh, behind the scenes, hoping to get to a resolution, certainly one that doesn't involve legislation. There's a proposal House members are floating to potentially only vacate a few or half of the board members instead of the entire thing. I'm glad that our committees are looking at this, but my, what I encourage all of our committees to do is look at every single university, look at every single college within this state. The move comes after backlash from the community and Democratic lawmakers who claim race is playing a role since TSU is the only public historically black university in Tennessee. It really is overreaching. It sends a terrible message publicly. I received text messages and emails and calls from friends across the country because the news went 
kind of, you know, Twitter viral again, and they said, why are y'all still doing this? It also signals a bit of dysfunction between Senate and House Republicans, a theme that started with last year's special session on public safety and has carried into this year with education. There's members of the House who I'm assuming are working with them as well and members of the Senate. And so if there is a compromise, I'm sure we'll hear about it. I'm not directly involved in it. Still, TSU is left in the balance. In Nashville, Chris O'Brien. Now to our This Week cover story. He blamed plane issues and the weather for an hour and a half delay in delivering his speech. But the former president, Donald Trump, made it to Nashville seeking votes and cash from an audience of religious broadcasters. What a group. There was no way I was going to miss this. The plane was coming in. That plane was coming in. I said, are we okay to the pilot? He said, uh, I think so. I didn't like that answer. I think we're okay, sir. I think we should be okay. I'm saying, should we turn back? He said, I wouldn't mind if we did. I said, I don't have the courage to turn back from these people. Just land the sucker, would you please? The president's been talking about a wide range of things at the moment, everything from addressing this crowd of Christian broadcasters, saying that he is shocked that any Christian would vote for a Democrat, continuing to rail an attack against President Biden and his opponent in the primary for the Republican nomination, Nikki Haley, that as we're just a couple of days away from a crucial South Carolina primary. And in South Carolina, Nikki Haley is losing to me. It looks like she's going to lose by 25 or 30 points. That's a lot. She's governor, but people don't like her too much. And she's hurting the party, but I don't care. Let her run, because think of it, if she's not running, they're not talking about us. So maybe it's better if she runs a little bit. And he continues to also mention his recent legal battles as well, going into that, that um, a couple times now while he's also mixing in praise for the audience and praise for their work as Christian broadcasters. He just said that the enthusiasm of this election is actually better than what he saw in 2016 and says that we don't answer to Washington, we answer to God. Stay with us this week continues in a moment.